Yeah, folks, you read that title correctly. Nazi Dracula must die. This is a weird science, strange magic, alternative reality, World War II setting for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons filled with vampires and, and werewolves and zombies and the like. This is going to be one of the inaugural releases of Crystal Quill Press, and it'll be launching on Kickstarter on October 6th. The folks from Crystal Quill you're probably familiar with if you've done anything with the DMs Guild in the past. You'll notice people like Anthony Joyce and MT Black, Justice Armin, and a whole many, uh, Ashley Warren, a whole bunch of other people are involved in the production of this. So you know it's going to be good. The art is fantastic. I have a couple art pieces to showcase to you as well. And we're just going to talk a little bit about what you can expect from the Kickstarter, what's going to happen in the campaign, and maybe a little reveal or two of something you'll get to see in the game. There is also a 1 minute and 11 second video by the folks at Quillsilver Studios, also run by some friends of mine. So why don't we take a look at this video? It's shot uh, as a, like almost like a period piece. I think it'll be pretty interesting. Let's give it a shot. I like the silent kind of... Europe, 1942. Nazi Germany leads demonic hordes and monstrosities on a rampage across Europe, destroying everything in their path. Allied spies uncover an insidious Nazi plot to use weird science and strange magic to take over the world. Meanwhile, in ancient Transylvania, Count Dracula has allied himself with Berlin, raising an undead army to conquer the Soviet Union. But the Allies have not been idle. With the help of Albert Einstein, they've begun assembling a team of elite operatives from around the world, each one possessing extraordinary abilities. The fate of the free world hangs in balance. The world needs brave heroes like you to infiltrate Transylvania to ensure one thing. Nazi Dracula must die. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly... You know, it's gonna be filled with some humor. That was awesome. I love how it was shot as like a war reel. That was really cool. Um, and I have some more information. So again, there is a Kickstarter uh, launch page, pre-launch page that you can go sign up for for when it goes live on October 6th. But I have some of the information uh, so I can give it to you ahead of time. So it's gonna be over 77 pages. You're gonna get eight new subclasses in it, new equipment, firearm rules, magic items, and spells unique to the setting. Uh, new monsters as well. Uh, you're going to get a description of the setting, which I have seen some of it already, and it's very well done, describing this kind of alternative reality, Berlin, Transylvania. Uh, it comes with a pre-written adventure, two-hour adventure for fifth-level characters to hunt down and kill Nazi Dracula in Brand Castle, which is probably one of my favorite parts here, is there's two full-color maps, one of uh, alternate reality Europe, and the, probably the one that I'm most excited about as a huge Dracula Vampire Castlevania fan is a full color map of uh, Brand Castle. So that's, that's Castle Dracula. Um, it's also going to be ready for virtual tabletops as well. You also have pre-gen characters. So if you don't want to make a new character, they'll have pre-gens available so you can just hop right in to the adventure. Eight uh, pre-gen characters. Uh, digital character sheets ready to go as far as pricing goes looks like uh, $15 for a digital version $20 for a digital version plus early access to the manuscript and then in a similar fashion for the physical copy 25 for the physical 30 for early access as well um, and it's going to deliver the rewards through uh, drive through print on demand drive through RPG because it's going that route you know it's going to be open game license so just keep that in mind as you're going through this um, and then, you know, if obviously, uh, that is that there are stretch goals planned for 45,000, 60,000, 75,000 and 90,000. Uh, and my favorite is the, why back this project? The first bullet, you get to fight Nazis. Second bullet, you get to kill Dracula. Uh, really that's, I mean, I'm sold just on that alone. Um, but again, it is 5e compatible. Uh, so that means it's relatively easy to pick up. If you know 5e, you're going to be fine. If you don't know 5e, 5e is super easy, so you shouldn't have any problem there. Um, and again, you'll be supporting a large, talented, and inclusive team who are receiving fair pay for their work. This I did want to bring up. So Crystal Quill Press, which is, again, this studio that is launching for this book, 
They are committed to paying a fair and livable wages to those working in the RPG industry. As part of their commitment, they're paying each of their designers 20 cents a word uh, for the project and editors 10 cents a word. Currently, and this is true, folks, if you're not aware, current industry standard is to pay four to 10 cents per word for designers and two to five cents for editors. So they are trying to go above and beyond, which is fantastic. And if this, I, I sincerely hope this does well because I love to see what other stuff Crystal Quill Press can put out in the future. Again, as we're kind of going down this list, the team, I'll just list off the names real quick and then we'll talk a little bit about what you can expect. Anthony Joyce, Sadie Lowry, MT Black, Justice Armin, Amber Lipke, Ashley Warren, Brian Patterson, Daniel Kwan, uh, and Rika, Aaron, oh boy, I'm sorry, Angiolini, I think, Jeremy Forbing, Letitia Jaquis, Laura Hirschbrenner, Noah Grand, Rich, oh God, Rich, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Les Coflair, Steve Fiddler, Stephen Pankatai, David Lizerbram, and Matthew Barretts. Barretts. Either way, there are a lot of folks with a lot of stake in the RPG industry writing for a variety of different things, not just Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, but again, some very successful things they've done themselves on the DMs Guild, Kickstarter, or otherwise. And then again, some of them, several of them, have written for actual things published by Wizards of the Coast. Not that that means anything uh, or needs to be the determining factor because several of them have also written for other independent RPGs. So, or, or other RPGs in general. So if we go ahead and take a look, I'm gonna just, I have the early edition of the manuscript. I don't wanna give too much away, but um, you know, we kind of got the, the gist from the video. Everybody plays humans in this. We are fighting a war in alternative reality, Germany. So we are humans, we're not playing elves and dwarves and whatnot. So that'll be something. And then uh, variant human rules do exist for that. Um, and then they have, again, because it's also designed to be something intro people can get into, it gives you a little bit of background on how ability scores and backgrounds and things work in the manuscript. Um, backgrounds are pretty much similar to what we're used to, but they're not really going to give you any background, or at least from what I can tell here, uh, a background feature like we have defined in 5th edition. So it's basically a little bit for RP stuff as well as skill, tool, and language proficiencies. You have a standard set of starting equipment that you will just have, everyone will have. Uh, you know, clothes, silver dollars, notification papers. Um, and then, uh, you know, you'll have a handgun, bullets, and a fighting knife. And if you happen to have proficiency in certain things, you might have a rifle or sniper rifle or body armor. Um, and then we actually have here, I can tell you uh, some of the classes, which are pretty exciting. I'll tell you what they are right now. We have the Path of the Highlander Barbarian. Redemption Domain Cleric, which I'm very interested to see because we have a Redemption Paladin. I'm curious how Redemption Cleric holds up. Spec Ops Ranger, Fighter Pilot, or sorry, Pilot Fighter, which I wanted to say Fighter Pilot, but you get my point. Uh, Oath of Liberty Paladin, Sniper Rogue, Pan Patron Warlock, and School of Glamour Wizard. I actually do want to show you I have a piece of art showcasing uh, the kind of archetypical characters of all of those. So I'm assuming this is our Highlander right here, right, with the bagpipes. This is probably our Paladin. Uh, here's our Sniper Rogue. Um, this is probably our Fighter here. Uh, and I'm going to guess this is the Wizard, maybe? One of these has got to... Well, you get the point. Either way, the art is really good. And again, if you want to see the front cover again, here is that front cover. Um, so let me come back over here. And what I want to do is scroll down, and I actually have in the version of the manuscript that I have the Oath of Liberty Paladin, as well as the Pan Warlock, and then I also have uh, the kind of the the Gazetteer that will give you kind of a heads up as to what's going on. Um, you know, the theater of war, if you will, with the Axis powers, the Blitzkrieg, and all that. So there's a degree of historical accuracy to it as much as can be in a world with you know, magic and vampires and whatnot. But uh, it's really well done. Einstein's setting up the Extraordinary Operatives Executive, so the XOE, which is going to basically be your, your League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, your, your group of secret operatives, your shield, if you will, to help fight back uh, this encroaching enemy here. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to showcase off real quick here the, uh, 
the Oath of Liberty Paladin, which I thought is really cool. You know, Paladins are my favorite class. So I thought, let's take a look. So it's kind of hard to see here. I'll zoom in. You can see our uh, we have our various tenets here, um, as a Paladin does. And then our spells are Sanctuary, Shield of Faith, Knock, Warding, Bond, Beacon of Hope, Mass Healing Word, Death Ward, Freedom of Movement, Pass Wall, and Telepathic Bond. Again, if any of the names sound slightly different to you, Reminder, open game license. But I really like the set of spells because I've never seen like a paladin with pass wall, and that's really cool. Uh, we have our two channel divinities. One is War Cry. As an action, you bellow out each fiend, monstrosity, and undead within 30 feet. Um, must make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, on a fail, they are turned uh, for one minute or until they take damage. Um, and in addition, you can choose a number of friendly creatures equal to your proficiency bonus within 30 feet. Uh, that can hear you increasing their walking speed by 10 feet. So this is a turn uh, effect, as in turn undead, for the enemies if they are monst fiend monstrosity or undead. But also your allies uh, get, uh, at least up to your proficiency bonus, get an increased movement speed. And then it has typical turn stuff. They can spend their turn trying to move away. If they take damage, then they can come back. Now we have Bring It Down. When you use your Divine Smite when damaging an object or a structure, you can use your Channel Divinity as a reaction to turn the attack into a critical hit. So you can use that. That's pretty cool, actually, to try to bring down structures with your Divine Smite. You get Aura of Endurance at level 7. Um, choose one damage type. You and friendly creatures within 10 feet of you have resistance to that damage type while you're not incapacitated. You can change the damage type when you finish a long rest. I don't know why that doesn't exist. I mean, we have things like um, the Oath of the Ancients or of War Aura of Warding that gives you resistance to all damage from spells. This is so clean. Like, that is just such a simple thing. I love it. Uh, unfettered Liberator at 15. You can't be grappled, paralyzed, restrained, or stunned. Pretty solid. That kind of fits the 15th level Paladin ability. And then lastly, we are going to get our, uh, oh, is that Meliorist Beacon? I'm not, oh, man, I feel like I should know what that is. Uh, anyway, you're a symbol of freedom to those around you, glowing with an enriching light. Your scars of war, gleaming gold for hope or red for deliverance. You gain the following benefits for a minute. The walking speed of any friendly creature that starts its turn within 30 feet of you increases by 10 feet till the end of that turn. Any friendly creature that starts its turn within 30 feet of you regains hit points equal to a d6 plus your charisma modifier. And each of your melee attacks deals extra damage equal to your charisma modifier. In addition, when you take the attack action with a melee weapon, you can make one additional attack. You can use this feature. Uh, once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. And we have a little bit right here about uh, our, our the Shield of Liberty here. We have our kind of archetypical character and a little backstory for those. That's actually something I really miss in 5th edition is we don't get like a standard NPC for each like uh, class that we have or subclass. So we can, you know, kind of get an idea. So anyway, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Uh, the folks from Nazi Dracula Must Die, I've worked with several of them in the past reviewing a bunch of their different products on the DMs Guild. And when I heard that this was coming out, with a title that eye-catching, how could you turn it down, right? So coming out again to Kickstarter on October 6th. So be on the lookout for that. I'm sure you're going to, you know, come join me. Let's go back and let's unlock those stretch goals. I'm excited to see what they are. My information here doesn't tell me, but I'm excited to see if we can unlock them themselves. And again, especially because of all the great things we talked about, about Crystal Quill Studios. Uh, sorry, Crystal Quill Press, my mistake. Um, I really hope that they do well because I'd love to see what kind of amazing things they can put out in the future. And it's always nice to see someone trying to do their best for like the little guy out there and provide true living wages for RPG writers and designers. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Links in the description below. I'll see you all next time.